In this presentation, we're going to look for expected values for games of chance. And basically, we're going to show why gambling is not a good idea. So here's our rule. The expected value is the sum of the XP. And you will notice this is the same rule as the mean for a random variable. So these ideas are equivalent. So here's a standard game of chance. There are 18 red spaces, 18 black spaces, and two green spaces on a roulette wheel. If you bet $5 on black and it comes up, you win. Otherwise, you lose. So there are 18 black spaces out of 38 total. 18 plus 2, 20 losing spaces out of 38 total. We can use that information to construct our random variable. So we win $5 18 times out of 38. We lose $5 20 times out of 38. So we're going to use that to go ahead and find our expected value. And we will do that on Excel. So we either win 5 or we lose 5. The probability for winning 5 is 18 out of 38. The probability for losing 5 is 20 out of 38. And XP requires us to multiply those together. And we'll do the same thing with autofill. And if we sum those up, that will give us our expected value. The expected value is the sum of the XP so that we can say that our expected value, or E, is equal to negative 26.3 cents. So we would expect to lose about 26 cents every time that we play this game. So here's our table. And then what is the house's edge? The house keeps about 26 cents for every $5 wagered. So the house's edge here is about 5.26%. So indeed, of every dollar that's wagered on this game, the house can expect to keep a little bit more than five cents. So this is a very bad game to play in a casino. It's got one of the greatest house's edges. So you'll lose your money fairly quickly playing roulette. We're going to run a mini tab simulation of this. So we're going to have 10,000 games of roulette. We are going to assume 1 through 18 are winners and 19 through 38 are losers. And we want to see, on average, how much will we lose for each game that's played. So we're going to simulate a bunch of roulette games. We're going to say random 10,000 C1 semicolon integer one through 38. And you'll notice the first number was a 19. And we said one through 18 are winners, then a three, then a 36. So that's a loser. Three would be a winner. 36 is a loser, 5 is a winner, 20 is a loser. We want to put these in order so we can see how many winners and how many losers we had. So I'm going to say sort C1 into C2, and then we're going to count how many numbers in C2 are less than or equal to 18. So there we have it. And how many numbers do we have less than or equal to 18? So I'm just going to kind of look up the list and see what's going on. You can see right now these are all 19's. So looking for the first example when we are 18. And looking at this, the last 18 was number 4712. So we know we have 4712 winners. Let's put a note up here. We have 4,712 winners. So if that's the case, how many losers do we have? Well, we could say let K1 equal, we had a total of 10,000 games, 10,000 games minus 4,712. Then I'll say print K1. And that's 5288. So again, we'll notice that we have 5,288 losers. We have 5,288 losers. So our question will be, on average, how much did we lose for every game played? So to answer that question, we're going to go back to Excel. So we have 4,712 winners, and we win $5 for every time we play. We have 5,288 losers, so we lose $5 for every time we lose. Those instances when we play. So 
how much did we win all together? Our total winnings are going to be the product of that number and that number. So we won a total of 23,560, but we lost a lot more equals this number times this number. So we lost that much. On average, how much did we lose, or how much did we lose altogether? We lost 2,880. So our average loss would equal 2880 divided by 10,000 games. And you can see that our average loss was 28.8 cents per game when I expected to lose 26.3 cents per game. So in fact, on this Minitab simulation, I did worse than expected. The house actually made more money from me than the house expected to make. Okay, here's another game of chance, football wagering. Uh, football handicappers set a point spread, and basically it can be shown that the likelihood of winning that gambling bet is going to be about 50%. So if you bet $100 and you win, you're going to collect 100 If you bet $100 and you lose, you're going to lose 110 That's called juice or vigorish. The probability of winning is 0.5. The probability of losing is 0.5. So there's our expected value. 100 times 0.5, 50. Negative 110 times 0.5, negative 55. Adding those together, the expected value for this game is minus 5. So for every $100 you spend, you can expect to lose $5. So the house's edge this time is 5 out of $100, or 5%. So in sports wager and football wagering, for every dollar that you gamble, the house can expect to keep 5%, can expect to keep 5 cents. Again, a very poor way, a very poor investment. Here is a lottery game. Cost a dollar to play. You've got to select a three-digit number. If your number is selected, you win $500. If not, you lose your initial bet. So if you win $500, you really win $499 because you don't get back the original investment. So your two possibilities are winning $499 or losing one. Picking a three-digit number, there are a thousand three-digit numbers, so that should indicate to us what that random variable is going to be. So you're going to win $499 if your three-digit number comes up, one out of a thousand. You're going to lose a dollar, if not, 999 out of a thousand. So here's our numbers. X times P, 0.499. X times P, negative 0.999. This time the expected value is negative 0.5. So the house keeps a half a dollar for every dollar that's wagered. So in this situation, the house's edge is a ridiculous number of 50%. So the state of Illinois for the pick three game gets to keep half of all the money wagered compared to roulette where it's a little bit more than 5%. And roulette is probably the worst game that you can play in a casino. So gambling with the state lottery on the pick three is even worse bet than gambling on football or gambling using roulette. Here's one other example we'll look at, which is the little lotto. These are the odds posted on the website. So if you match all five numbers in order, you can win $10,000, and your odds are 1 out of 575,757. Your chances of winning 100 are 1 over 3,387. Chances of winning $10, 1 out of 103. Chances of winning 1, 1 in 10. So using that, we can go ahead and come up with our random variable. So if you win 10,000, you really win 99,999, because you win 10,000 minus the one that you originally invested. So we have that number. If you win 100, you really win 99, et cetera. The question is, what are the probability of losing your dollar? You'd have to add up these four numbers and then subtract their sum from 1. And that will give you your probability of losing. So what does that turn out to be? So using Excel, we have all of these numbers. And your probability of losing, as it turns out, is 0.88999. Multiplying your x times p, and notice that e to the negative 6, that's corresponding to scientific notation. I hope that doesn't trouble anybody. But our expected value here is negative 0.599699. So the expected value on this game is negative 0.60. Or in this case, the state set takes 60 cents on every dollar that's gambling. Again, a very, very poor decision. So gambling is not a good idea.